Okay, so we're going to be talking about unplugged gamification today. So I'm using some unplugged teaching aids. This is a good old uh, easel pad, which is a great little way to talk about one of the first games you want to talk about. And one of the nice ways to get involved in gamification is to start using what are called recall games. And what these means are simple little games that you use at the beginning of a class to review what you covered last week. It makes it more interesting for the learners. And here's a great little game that we've pioneered across the Society for Teaching and Learning at conferences. We brought them to faculty conferences to students all over and I use them for years in my courses in Ryerson in biology. So let's just have a look at how we do a little territory capture map game. We're going to first all start off by building a little territory capture map. So now I built a map here and this map then is going to be divided into a series of provinces or cities. It doesn't matter what they look like but it's important to have five of them. So we're going to call this province one, province two, province three, province four, and we'll make one more here, call that province five. Makes sense so far? So these are territories that you could capture. You could give these names. You could call this Toronto, this Mississauga, this Scarborough, etc. So the object of the game is for the students to be asked questions. You're going to have the group set up in the room in groups of six students. And those groups of six students, you're going to move in a clockwise direction around the room asking them a question. The question is going to have three possible multiple choice answers. So this is group A, this is group B, this is group C. And you can have your groups continue along there. You're going to give each group about 15 seconds to answer the question. If they get the question correct, you're going to play, they're going to be allowed to place a marker to control any of these territories. So let's ask group one its sample question. Group one, you have 15 seconds to answer the question. Who was one of the founders of gamification? Was it David Kaufman? Was it Isaac Eselboffin? Or was it Nick Pellis? Which one? You have 15 seconds to answer. You can even hum a Jeopardy song. Now after 15 seconds, let's suppose they pick the right answer, which in this case was Nick Pelling. I said Pellis, but it should be Pelling. So they picked Nick Pelling as one of the founders of gamification. So now they're going to be allowed to place a marker anywhere they want on the chart. So they're going to choose number one. So this is now owned by group A. They could put a giant A on it, or you can use different colored markers. So they now own this territory. Now, if they get that question right, they're, allowed, they're asked one more question. If they get it wrong, they don't get to place a marker, and we go on to the next group. Makes sense? So if you get it right, you get the reward of a second question. So we're going to now ask another question about gamification, and we're going to say gamification is defined as which of the following? Is it the use of games for non-entertainment purposes? Is it the use of games for entertainment? Or three, is it basically a technique only used in psychology? Well, that's a pretty simple question. It's the, the answer was one. So if we pick the answer one, the use of games in non um, uh, entertainment environments, they would get another one, uh, a chance to place a marker. Now they can decide that they can put their marker on number one, because the person at the end of the game, when you've asked all the questions that controls the most number of spaces, wins the game. So that's pretty good. They have two markers on one. It'll take at least two other markers for another team to displace them. Or they could decide to place a marker here so that they would own territory one and three would be under their command. Now it's time for group B. So they were finished. They got one question. They got it right, so they got to place a marker, and that's it. We're now moving on to the next group. We give them 15 seconds with a question. Suppose they get a question right. They can decide to place a marker here on B, which means they would neutralize A's lead, or they could decide, for example, to place their marker on two, thus giving them having neutralized the lead on A, but they also, or, or, um, uh, if they have two questions, if they have one question, this would just give them B. They would now own this territory. Once we got to group C, they would then be able to place a marker. Group C could decide, you know what, no one's got anything on five yet. I'm going to claim five, and now we own it because we got the question right. If you get another question, uh, you got it right, and you got another question, you got that correct, you could say, well, you know what, I want to shore this up by having two C's. That'll be harder to displace me. Or you could challenge someone else for territory. What's very interesting about this game is that generally you go around the class about four or five times. It gives everyone a chance to connect in the group. It gives them a chance to talk to each other, to think about the context of the question from last week, and to make the map work. And the way this set it up with these five territories and this mechanic is that it's possible for someone to start out at the bottom and come all the way out and beat the other groups at the end by having a luck of the draw and a good question. Here's a great way to energize 
exercise you're learning called Recall Territory Map Capture. Try it out in a class sometime or some variant and let us know what you think of it. That's signing off today with Unplugged Gamification, Center for Teaching and Learning at Humber College.